Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo and it's such a pleasure to be here with you tonight. I believe that this broadcast is going to be a tremendous blessing to you. And in this broadcast, I'm talking about how to see more healings and miracles. And before we get started, because I know you guys are jumping on right now, but I just want to pray before we get started. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you right now. I thank you that your word is truth. Father, I pray that this word tonight will go forth and touch the multitudes and that this word tonight, your word, Lord, would lodge so deeply in the hearts and minds of those who listen, Lord, or who watch, you know, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, the, the podcast, or whatever other means. Father, I pray that this word will be just so deeply lodged within them, Lord, and they will not forget it. And Lord, we just thank you right now. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So welcome, 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 welcome to the broadcast. Okay, that was a little over the top, right? Oh my goodness, I think I'm having a bad hair day today. Anyway, um, I just, anyway, TMI, right? Too much information. Okay, so this is going to bless you tonight because there was a message that I received that came straight from the Holy Spirit several days ago, and I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in, and I have notes to keep me on track because you know I can, you know, easily just woo, but I like to flow with the Holy Spirit. So, you know, this message that I'm bringing tonight, it is not just for me, but it is for every single believer in Christ and for those who will become believers as we do our job, you know, as Christians representing Jesus. So several days ago, one morning, oh gosh, this was amazing. While I was just talking with the Lord, the Holy Spirit asked me a question and, you know, some people say, was it audible? It was not the audible voice, but it was a clear clear impression, a thought, right, that came. And this is what he said. The Holy Spirit said to me, he said, do you want to know, do you want to know why people, even those who call themselves real Christians, and I'll explain that. I was like, real Christians. He said, do you want to know why people, even those who call themselves real Christians, don't see more healings and miracles? And I was like, of course, I said, yes, Lord, of course, I want to know, like, you know, because I mean, I am going after this with everything I've got and the Lord knows my heart. And this is what the Holy Spirit said. He said, I'm sorry, I, I said that wrong. He said, do you want to know why people don't see more healings and miracles? He kept it simple. He said, do you want to know why people don't see more healings and miracles? And I said, yes, Lord. I was like, yes, I want to know. And he, this is what the Holy Spirit said. He said, too many people, even those who are real Christians, this is what he said, use the name of Jesus flippantly with an attitude of, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I am telling you, that message from the Holy Spirit when, I mean, it hit me right in the core of my heart. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I literally, I mean, I, I just... I like dropped. I, I, I was just like, not, I didn't drop to my knees, but I was like, holy moly. Oh my goodness. And I'm telling you, I literally had to repent on the spot because he wasn't just talking to me. He was talking to me, but he was talking to, he wanted me to bring this message to you because how many times do you hear people? They're just in the name of Jesus, this in the name of Jesus, that, and while we should use the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, that was straight from the Holy Spirit. And he said, because he said, do you want to know why people don't see more healings and miracles? And I was like, yes, Lord, I want to know. And he said, because people, even those who call themselves, you know, real Christians, what does that mean? It means those who really follow Christ. There's a lot of people that call themselves Christians, but they don't care anything about God or the word of God or Christ or doing what he said, right? And Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I do, <laughs> right? Right? Those who follow him, those who um, go after him, his word, his ways, they are the ones that are real believers. But in any event, but this is what 
the Holy Spirit said. And I'm telling you, it was like, oh my gosh, ouch. I literally repented on the spot. And I said, Lord, I am so sorry. Because it was like, it's like taking the name of, of Jesus in vain, really. You know, because we're not putting the reverence on that name that it deserves. And this is what God showed me. You know, I he was showing me that he brought me this message because I needed to bring it to you so that we can change our hearts and minds about this immediately and forever, forever. And I was like, Lord, thank you. And I repented on the spot. I said, Lord, I am so sorry for every time that I have, you know, said in the name of Jesus and not really thought about it. And that's the problem. Sometimes we get so used to saying in the name of Jesus this or in the name of Jesus that and it's flippant, right? It's it we're not doing it. We're not revering the name. And this is what the Lord showed me. I looked up the word revere because the Holy Spirit showed me that we must revere the name of Jesus. And I, so I looked up the word revere and as a noun, it means deep respect for someone or something. And as a verb, it means to regard or treat with deep respect. Woo! We've got to revere that name. So I started thinking about it, you know, and I, I mentioned this before that all the times that we're just like, okay, in the name of Jesus, this, in the name of Jesus, that, in the name of Jesus, it won't rain today. Now, if there's a major storm coming at you and, you know, it's threatening your life or you know what I'm saying. The bottom line is no matter what you pray, you know, or you say in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you ever since that day, I pause now. I was like, Lord, help me because I, I repented for just flippantly. Anytime I've ever said in the name flippantly. I'm not really thinking about it, not putting the weight that it deserves on it. But the Lord said, the Holy Spirit said, do you want to know why people don't see more healings and miracles? Because they use the name of Jesus flippantly with an attitude of, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Whoa. That was, it was just a really, you know, a real eye opener, right? So ever since that day, I've caught myself every time I go to say in the name of Jesus, I pause and I think about what am I saying this in regard to, right? I've got to put weight on it. Every time we need, you know, we speak the name of Jesus, we've got to do it with the ultimate respect, right? Why? Because that name, the name of Jesus has all the power in heaven and on earth, right? Why? Because he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He came to the earth to destroy the works of the devil so that you and I could have his life. This is so, you know, he paid the ultimate price in blood with his life for you and me. And, you know, so that we could be forgiven, we could be set free, and so we could live forever with him after we leave this earth. Everyone's going to be leaving this earth. He loves us so much. In Acts 3.16, Peter said it was faith in the name of Jesus that made that lame man to walk. All power is in the name of Jesus. Oh my gosh. I know I'm drilling it home, but I'm telling you right now, this is something that we really have to get. Philippians uh, 2, 10 and 11 says that at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So that brings glory to God the Father, right? Every, everybody um, saying that, you know, that every knee bowing and every tongue confessing, that brings glory to the Father. And the Lord showed me a vision 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was going back, I'm like, wow, Lord, okay, yeah. 10 years ago of a beautiful, big red present that was just given to the world. And this big red box, right? It was a big box. It was a present. It was just looked like a gift. And it was all wrapped in red with a big white bow around it. And I was like, like, Lord, what is this? And the Lord was showing me that Jesus, right? The blood, his sacrifice, what he did, right? His blood was red, right? He said that Jesus was his gift to the world. 
And I was like, whoa, Lord, this is amazing. And I said, and I was like, why the white bow? And the Holy Spirit said, because your sins have been washed white as snow. Oh my gosh, I just had to stop and like, oh my gosh, I was so grateful and so thankful. Jesus is God's gift to the world. And yet the world, they, they don't acknowledge, they, they haven't, you know, they don't really receive him. And honestly, it's because they don't understand. They don't understand what he did for them. And Jesus is the Lord of all creation, right? And I've said this already many times. His name is above every name. It's above all names. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, right? Jesus. Without Jesus, we couldn't be healed. We couldn't go to heaven, right? And like I said, we're all going to be leaving here one day. So, so many of us, uh, so many people in the world are clueless about why Jesus came and what he did and accomplished for us. And I'm telling you, so many people think that Jesus is, or God is just out to punish them, that as soon as they do something wrong, God's just going to squash them like a bug. You know, I grew up thinking this too. I mean, I remember, you know, growing up Catholic and I'm not singling out any denomination, but I always heard, oh, God's going to punish you. God's going to punish you. God's going to punish you. So I grew up believing that God was a punishing God instead of a loving, saving, forgiving, you know, God. But I'm going to say this too. God is a holy God. He's a holy God. And the, the thing is, is there had to be justice for our sins. There had to be payment for our sins. You know, that this is another thing, you know, with the what they call the hyper grace message that Listen, God didn't just say, hey, it's okay. You can sin all you want. Love you. It's cool. I got you. No worries. No, absolutely not. Justice had to be paid. Someone had to pay the price. And that's why Jesus came to earth, right? Oh my gosh. Oh, man. You know, when you really, really think about it, if, if God said, yeah, you know, hey, it's cool. You can do whatever you want. You'll still go to heaven. You know, whatever. He wouldn't be a God of justice. And the enemy would continue to rule over everybody on this earth, regardless of, you know, Jesus, right? No, no, no. God is a God of justice. So Jesus literally, oh, how do I say this? This is why we as Christians, we literally have the most important job in all the earth. We do. We have the responsibility, the, the, the awesome responsibility to tell the world how much God loves them, to tell them that he's a loving God, but you don't stop there. You tell them what Jesus did for them, that he paid the price with his life to set them free. That's how much God loves them. He loves them. But, you know, it's, oh my gosh. Hmm. Jesus could have just stayed in heaven where it was all comfortable, right? He could have, but he didn't because he knew that we would have been lost forever. But he came. He didn't just cover our sins at the cross. He literally, I mean, his body, literally, he took on every sin, every sickness, every disease, every everything at the whipping post. That whipping post, that's when he took all of the, 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 the sickness and all of the, you know, he, it also says that the chastisement of our peace was on him. That's why we have, we can have his peace now. I mean, it was like the great exchange, not it was like, it was the great exchange. What he did for us, he did so we could have his life. He took a disease, sickness. He took everything that the enemy was, was hurting us with. He took it, Jesus, this beautiful, sinless man, took it all on him to pay that price for you and me so we would never have to die in our sins, so we wouldn't have to pay the price. And I'm telling you, this is what, this is what we need to, to tell people. God loves them. He's not out to punish them, but they have to... Oh, we've got to understand this. We just have to understand this, you know, and, and I know that not everybody takes it lightly, like with the name of Jesus, but so many do. And we can't anymore. 
We can't just read this in the Bible and just, oh, you know, just whatever. No, he did this for us and we've got to reverence his name. We've got to reverence his name. First Peter 2.24, by his stripes, you were healed. Were. It was paid for. Jesus paid the price for you. And let me tell you, a lot of times people, you know, okay, I, w I was at breakfast with a friend of mine uh, like a month ago, several weeks ago. No, it was about a month ago, maybe four or five, six weeks ago. My friend Kathy, and it was awesome. We were sitting there at breakfast and it was like we were talking about the Lord and what Jesus did. And all of a sudden, it was like this ding, this light bulb came on for her. I don't know if she's watching right now, but it was awesome. And Cup, just say this is a cup of coffee, right? It looks so big when I put it close to the camera. But anyway, but it's really not. It's just average. Anyway, so just say you have a cup of coffee, right? And the Lord Jesus, you go, you know, they give you a cup of coffee. You're at Starbucks, whatever, or whatever, diner, wherever. You get a cup of coffee and the Lord is with you and he pays for it and says, okay, here's your coffee. It's paid for it. They give it to you and you're like, oh, okay. But then you turn around and go, oh, I have to pay for this. They're like, what are you talking about? It was already paid for. It's already paid for. It's yours. Take it. Enjoy it. Drink it. Receive it. Oh my goodness. A cup of coffee doesn't do justice, but it's just, I'm just trying to help you to understand that Jesus already paid for you to be healed. He already paid for you to have the life that he has. Everything that's belongs to him, belongs to you. Everything. You are a joint heir with Christ Jesus if you are, you know, you've asked him to be your Lord and Savior. If you're his believer, you're, you follow him, you know, and with your heart. God knows. God looks at the heart. He always looks at the heart, you know. So, if you want to see more healings and miracles, this is what you do. You simply focus on the truth right? That Jesus paid for your healing with the stripes that he took on his back. You know, the Lord said that to me once. He said that when people stay sick, it's because they're focused on their sickness and not on my stripes, on his stripes, his stripes is what he said. He said, the Holy Spirit spoke that so clearly to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, just like when you think about, um, I, it was in numbers, I believe when they lifted up the bronze uh, snake in the desert, right? And because the people were complaining and all this stuff, and then the snakes were biting them, and they lifted up a bronze snake in the desert. God told Moses, you know, do this, and that when the people would look at that bronze, the, that bronze snake, and gaze intently at it, they would be healed. And that's why Jesus gave the reference that just like Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the desert. He, when the people look at Jesus, at the stripes he took on that cross, right? Because he said, just like uh, that bronze serpent was lifted up in the desert, the son of man has to be lifted up on the cross. And think about, I th always thought about this. I'm like, yeah, but it was a serpent. Yeah, but Jesus on that cross became sin for us. Mm. And then by us focusing on his stripes that he took for you, for me, we get healed. It's awesome. We, we have so much to be thankful for and you refuse to focus on sickness because that is what will keep you sick. Focus on the stripes that Jesus took. I mean, I'm telling you, if you got to go to YouTube and just do a search for, you know, under the passion of the Christ dash scourging or beating, you know, Christ beating, whatever, you're going to see it right there. And I don't even believe that does it justice, but if anything that I've ever seen, it probably does the most of what I've seen. And I know it was worse than that because the Bible says that Jesus was marred, beaten, unrecognizable. He didn't even look human. Ugh. So here's the thing. When you really know and understand, really think about this. Think about it. What Jesus did for you, I'm telling you, you will gain this new sense of, <sighs> he did this for me. He did this for me. And I'm telling you, every enemy, every sickness, every disease has to bow at the name of Jesus. 
every germ, every bacteria, every virus has to bow at the name of Jesus, but it's not going to do it automatically. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, when you know your authority, when you know that uh, Jesus gave you his authority to speak, to command. Okay. Oh my gosh. Sickness is an enemy and it doesn't bring God glory. Fear is a spirit that does not bring God glory, right? Jesus said the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus, this is John 10:10, 10, 10, said, I have come that they might have life. He didn't say abundant life. He said life and life more abundantly. What's like Jesus was life. God is life. He is love. And he wants you to have his very life, right? And experience it in all of its fullness. Not only that, but in Luke 10, 19, he said, I have given you, I have given you power, right? Authority, right? Authority over all the power of the enemy. Jesus gave you his authority. So it's not even yours. It's his. Oh, I'm telling you, Jesus doesn't want you to be bogged down with the cares of this world because the cares of this world choke the word. They choke the word of God and then you're steeped in problems and cares and fatigue and stress and sickness instead of on his life, on his stripes, on what he came to give you. I'm telling you, you can be so saturated with the peace of God because Jesus said, my peace, I leave you. Not as the world gives you, but I give you my peace. And that's uh, John 14, 27. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, right? And now as his believers, sons and daughters, right? We get to do the same thing. We must, we have to. We are the body of of Christ. Christ is the head. We are literally his body, his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. You and I literally are here to represent Jesus and we want to do it well. We want to give honor and glory to our King. We've got to understand that as sons and daughters, right? Co-heirs with Jesus, the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. So you've got Listen, Jesus said, it's not even me that does the works. It's the Father in me, right? And now we've got the Holy Spirit. So we've got the Spirit of Jesus. The Father is in Jesus. They're three in one, all living on the inside of you. Ah! You and the Holy Spirit are joined together as one spirit. I'll tell you, you should type it or write it down. Keep it right where you can see it every day. He who's joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I'm telling you, I love that. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, okay. This is why, too, you don't have to fear anyone. You don't have to feel rejected. You don't have to care about the opinions of other people. You want to respect people, but guess what? Not, not at the expense of the word. You stay on the word. If they say, what do you think about this? You know what? We don't have a right to give our opinion. We only have the right to say what our king says, period. And then once you speak the word, you stay on it. You stay on it and you don't back down from it. You don't back down from it. Okay? Okay. We got to hold, I'm going to say it again. We got to hold the name of Jesus in the highest regard above all names. And I said this before, a sickness, disease, right? They all have names. Cancer, HIV, they all have names. Bacteria, germs, virus. Even if you don't know their specific name, it doesn't matter. You know it's a germ, it's a virus, it's a bacteria, it's cancer, it's whatever. You have authority. God, oh, Jesus died to restore man's dominion, right? And Genesis 1, 26, 27, it says you have authority. Man, we have authority over every creeping, crawling thing that moves on the earth. A germ, a virus, a bacteria, a cancer, anything that's growing, moving, you have authority to command in the name of God. Jesus, for that thing to die in Jesus' name, for you to be made whole in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, oh my gosh, it's the name of Jesus that makes demons tremble, right? The Bible says so. The Word of God says that the name of Jesus makes demons tremble. But here's the deal. 
If you say the name of Jesus flippantly, right, or just saying it to see what happens, demons know it. They will laugh at you and they will not leave. I'm telling you right now, they, they may tremble, but they ain't leaving because they know that you don't really believe or understand the authority, your authority that Jesus has given you. And your faith isn't in your faith. You don't put faith in your faith. You put faith in the one that's in you, in his name, the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, all of heaven is behind that name. That name has all power. Everything has to bow at the name of Jesus. And when you really and truly get this and understand it, you are going to speak. You, I'm telling you, you are going to see a new level of power released like you've not seen before. I'm telling you, this is, you watch, you watch. When you minister healing to someone, think about this. You stand there representing your king, Jesus, right? He expects you to know understand and believe, right? You have to understand that faith, believe that faith in his name makes the enemy leave. Jesus said in Mark 16, 17 and 18, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, in my name, in the name of, say it with me, Jesus. Woo! Awesome. <coughs> in the name of Jesus, he said, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover the word of God in his name. In his name. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be yelling at you. I'm just so passionate. I hope you guys know that. So in his name, the name of Jesus. Oh my gosh, we're just about out of time. Number one, remember, he gave us his name. Number two, he gave us his word, which is the sword of the spirit that you can use to cut the enemy's head off. Mm. He gave us his spirit so that we can go and be witnesses of him in all the earth, right? So we can represent him well. You go and represent your king well, right? He's the king of king, kings and lord of lords and we're the kings and lords that he's the king and lord over right so we need to go and represent him our king jesus and let's bring god glory this all brings god the father glory right you know sickness i already said it doesn't bring god glory right but now you know what to do so I trust that this broadcast has been a, a real blessing to you tonight. I mean, just speaking all this has fired me up. Oh my gosh, my spirit is on ah, fire. So I want to ask you, please share this with everyone you can. Share this on social media. Share it. I don't know if you can share it on Instagram. Yeah, I don't really know what you know the deal is with all that. But share it on, on your Facebook, your profile, if you have a page, wherever. you You know, just share it everywhere you can. Share it with your friends. Let's advance God's kingdom together. You know, I say it all the time, but God wants this message going forth. And now you've got another, um, really another major, I don't even want to call the name of Jesus, you know, a key. But I mean, it's the name of Jesus. You've got this. And now you've got, this, this is something that I hope will just take your faith to a whole new level. And you'll start you know, thinking about the way that you speak the name of Jesus. So thank you for joining me on the broadcast tonight. I love you in Jesus. I bless you and I'll see you again really soon. All right. Have a great rest of your night. God bless you. Bye.